Well, hello. Back People again can for see me dancing now. I can yeah. just dance in, in you know. That's true. All by myself. It could be worse. You could be doing Led Zeppelin or not Led Zeppelin. Leonard Skinner. What? what? <laughs> oh, that clip of the in between. No, no, uh, you started them off. It's early. And I, I've just realized oh, yeah. the way our cameras are set up. I look like the shortest of the three of us. Uh, I don't think that <laughs> yeah. is the case. Um, okay, that's just oh, weird. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. listeners and viewers. And if you're not a viewer and you're just listening, you've just dodged a bullet. I'm just going to let you know that. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Tighten my lip. Tighten you my Keanu, because little... you're out there dodging bullets. Um, <laughs> but yeah, how are we doing, gentlemen? Mm. Not too bad. Uh, you know, I think the worst thing about right now is that it's beautiful and sunny here in Indiana today. And I, you wouldn't know it in here because it always looks the same. There's no windows. Are you telling the, the truth? The plus side of that, though, is it was also recently mm -hmm. very not beautiful and sunny in Indiana, and that looked the same in there. So That's, That is true. When it's mm -hmm. nasty out, it literally looks like like the same thing. You've yeah, reached pedal nerd homeostasis. <laughs> I thought Armageddon had happened yesterday in England because it was like raining so much that the sky was just permanently dark all day you know like how in sort of scandinavian countries they get 18 hours of dark in a day that's what england was like yesterday i was like somebody's broken the sun something's something's not right here but uh <laughs> it's cleaned up a bit today um however somebody reversed hear... the polarity on the sun oh no <laughs> yeah someone someone switch on it's but, grounded yeah. out oh no <laughs> The sun is not electrical, Brian. It, it's powered by gas. No, you don't know that. Have you ever been there? I yeah. How many times have you been, been to the sun? Uh, then you're just relying on secondhand evidence, or as we call it over here, science. Um, <laughs> I don't science believe in science. Learning. I believe in mojo. Well, one, you... one time I went to Mexico and I went in this tent with this dude, and then eventually we saw the sun together. But it was a uh, you know it was after ingesting odd substances, so I don't know if that counts. So I different. went inside the sun for a little while. <laughs> I, what color was there? The were sun? purple lizard people in there. Uh, it was green. Purple mm -hmm. lizard people. Have you been hanging around with Milon Tusk again? <laughs> no, he's he been pretty quiet there. actually. Other than like letting on random like various kind of extreme people onto Twitter. Uh, he he seems to have gone quiet now that Guinness have actually awarded him the Guinness World Record of man who lost the most wealth in one single year ever. Um, that was, really, I didn't know yes, that. Yes, the 2022 winner of that prestigious world record is Elon Musk, who basically wiped yes. off all of his wealth by being Elon Musk. So, <laughs> yeah, he's only got 10 billion now. Yeah, how's, how's he, he going to survive? survive? How's right, he how's he going to live on that? Yeah, you know, I was going to say by extreme quickly. people, you mean like Nuno Bedencourt from Extreme? Is that who you're talking about? Or... I wish. I mean, no. I'm sure he is allowed yeah. on Twitter, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't himself post a lot. I don't know. I don't follow him actually. I don't think. Maybe I, I like Nuno, but I don't follow him on on no. the socials either. He's, He's underrated. I feel like like people yeah. know Extreme from their singles, but like Nuno you know, shreds. No, he's oh, like well, a really, really good player. See, so from the era that I grew up in, like Nuno was, he was like a guitar god. I think he still should be in modern days. I want yeah, I mean, I still consider him that for sure. I, I, yeah. I think so. I, but I think I just, everyone thinks time, extreme and they think of more than words. Yeah. Don't true. diss that song. Many a drunken night. It's a good song, song, but it's not. It's not shred. It's not the. No, it's, it's not the crazy over the top. You know, it. it, it judging extreme on that is is kind of yeah, um, but he, at the time he it's was extreme. Uh, I didn't want to go there. Uh, at, at the time, um, he was big. I guess there were a lot of other very influential players that people were looking at, and I think he got just a little overlooked at the the time. Extreme were big, which was kind of, I guess. Mid nineties, sort of ninety four to ninety six. Yeah. I'm thinking. Was it that late? I was. I was thought it was maybe like ninety two. Yeah, actually, no. It was definitely for me, well, okay for for little old England. It was definitely early nineties. Maybe it was ninety two, maybe ninety one, ninety two. That sort of maybe year. might have been ninety. Yeah, because ninety ninety two was. Yeah, 
it was yeah. kind of like the period right before grunge, exactly. quote unquote, took but over. But it was when Guns N' Roses were dominating the charts and, you know, yep. Slash was the benchmark, I guess, that everyone Mr. was Big and, to. Yep. And obviously we mm -hmm. were still in the afterglow of all of the Satriani, Vi, all of the really, like, virtuoso guitarist so i think at the time he did just fly a little bit under the radar but i have definitely since come back to really appreciate just what an amazing player he is oh man mm -hmm. absolutely that wasn't um, on the list to talk about but i'm glad that wasn't on the list to talk i'm about. really <laughs> glad you did Im impromptu extreme talk. i have to apologize in advance so i'm still sounding a little bit bunged up you know last week i was like hey guys i'm i'm just getting over like some cold or something i was wrong I was just starting probably the worst cold stroke flu stroke whatever uh, that I've had for the last five years. This weekend, I thought I was going to have to call an ambulance because I was struggling to breathe at night because I was just coughing so much. Uh, but it's got better now. What, was that noise because it's got oh, better? that's or? good to hear. Yeah, that's not a good feeling. No, it was awful. So, yeah. Wait I mean, a minute. Who put this? Sorry, go ahead. Me? Who put what? Wait. No, I, I, I'll, I'll finish my thought after you guys get done. Well, I'm, I'm done. done. I was ill, yeah. but I'm getting better. I <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking through the list. I noticed there's a Mataverse floor vault. Yes. And, of course, the first thing I say is that seems really close to Metaverse. So. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, oh, Yeah, man. but he's been around since longer than the Metaverse. I don't know. I think Zuck might have an issue with that. Oh, that's right. Zuck yeah. might have a problem. You might have to change his yeah. name. Yeah, because his name is Matt. So... <laughs> is he Irish? Matt Overse. I've made that joke many times. I You've made that joke like again. four times. Every time yeah. his company comes up. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite joke about Irish names. Um, but yeah, did you, did you see this? It's a, it's a, a, a low gainish um, overdrive pedal that runs off old fruit, Bry. Old fruit isn't I don't like believe a brand. It. It, 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 hold on, think about it. It is possible to power stuff with like lemons, potatoes. The acid in it gives you a very small current. And you think about uh, an over. I think this draws four milliamps. This overdrive. One thing it says about it though is it can't really get very loud. It can't go beyond unity volume because you're not getting a lot of power out of an average banana. <laughs> It says, move over, Tonewood. Tone fruit is the next great tone debate. <laughs> that is really interesting. Huh. I, wow. I mean, now the question is, I, I got a, well, I'm sure I would have an answer if I just read through this, but the, the, um, oh, my brain just completely broke. Why can't I think of the name of the company? They make the Freakenstein fuzz. They make. The, the one I'm talking about is the mini bar. My brain totally failed. I've had them. Yeah, Ranger. Yeah. Ranger has the mini bar, and that is not powered by liquid. It is using liquid as a conductor between two points of the circuit. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is doing as well, or is it actually using chemical, you know, no, it's using like lemon the fruit power to power the as pedals. a battery? It, it, it's not okay. using. So, it. so there is no other power source then? There is no other power source, Brian. You can put this in your lunchbox and pat where well, you couldn't because the yogurt and peanut butter would kind of goop up the prongs. But you <laughs> could get, you know, I don't know what, what, what fruit is popular in um, in Martinsville. Uh, Coors Light? Bud Light? <laughs> I mean, you'd probably get a charge from <laughs> the that. Fruit, the fruit of Martinsville. Yeah. Natty Light. <laughs> Natty Light. <laughs> <laughs> Natty Light and a Snickers bar. I mean, there must be a state fruit. You have a state something for everything. So, what's the state fruit of Indiana? It's got to be corn, surely. No, it's not meth, Blake. It's meth. Yeah, the state fruit. Uh, it says lychee. What's Are you lychee? For real? Wait, that that's what it says. That's what the Google I mean, says. That's Let's a see. really Maybe nice. That's I'm sorry. Of... Another another one says sweet corn, so I'll I'll believe that more. That's a fruit. That's what it says. Indiana state. Oh, sorry. Indiana state vegetable is sweet corn. Indiana state fruit. Okay, this is ridiculous. This is misleading. Oh yeah, because I'm so this is 
the lychee is most searched for fruit in all 50 states. That's not the state fruit. That's the that's what came up on the Google search. This is why I like Chat GPT. You don't have to deal with all the nonsense. Let's see. You know the Let's Chat see, GPT see, like, is great. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm going through. Not every state has a state. Yeah, fruit. Indiana does not have a state fruit. Only a state vegetable. Oregon is a pear. Hmm. Interesting. A pear of what? Uh, overalls. I think. I knew he was going to go there. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to say it. So I think we should elect the state fruit. Well, therefore, it's cause light. I think we've we've agreed. The, uh... <laughs> yeah. What do you think, okay. Coors or Natty, though? Depends if you're in southern Indiana or northern Indiana. Let's see. What is Natty? Uh, natty, natty natural light. light. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a, it's an inexpensive beer that's yeah, okay. popular amongst uh, those that party and drink a lot of beer because it's cheap. Mm-hmm. I I have not the, sucked uh, this beverage. You You're not messing much. You yeah. don't need to. Yeah, Just fine. like t- take like a nice glass of water, put a little toilet water in it. Now you like. I don't. Know. I, I would say no. You could uh, crumble some breadcrumbs in there and filter them out, <laughs> and then it's kind of like Natty Light. <laughs> Got to have a little bit. yeast in there. A little bit of yeah. yeast, right? Mm-hmm. So, wow. yeah. I think well, we that's... just lost our Natty Light sponsorship. Right, <laughs> right. We're not going to get so it. No, no ad money this week, fellas. Milwaukee's Sorry. best, though. They'll get us. In the interest of science, surely you have now got to get this pedal and try various fruit and see if you can power it by sweet corn. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think that's possible. That's a good idea. You ever, uh, I lost my window that you guys are in. I can't find it. <laughs> There it is. Oh. Hello. Oh. We were just about to start making. I was faces. like, I lost you. Sorry. See, I've, we don't normally record video. We are today. I put pros. my shirt on. We real know quick what we're doing. I didn't want you to see it. Yeah. <laughs> What's know. next on the list? What do we got here? We have got. Mm. Uh, well, th- uh, this is definitely something Brian. Public have. image. Yes, oh, you're more Eurovision on. stuff. Yeah. We're talking well, about Eurovision again. Well, sort of. I mean, it's more the fact that John Lydon. The kind of enfant terrible of uh, English punk from the late seventies is now trying to do the Irish Eurovision song entry, which you're just going to look at as kind of like uh, shameless plugging away of his material. I I don't blame him for that, but given that he's come out with some fairly interesting political views, and you know he's known for selling to the cheapest most expensive whatever uh yeah i'm, I'm not really impressed highest by bitter this. is that what you're trying to that, say they were the words yeah. i was looking for i'm still a little bit ill my brain's not firing on on mm. half of its cylinders i mean of course i enjoy the music that came out of them back in the day including public image um it doesn't seem like a great fit for eurovision based on what little i know about it so i'd have to say you're probably right Hmm? Yep. I don't know. Well, it's just I my estimation. Mm-hmm. Brian is. I'm not very schematics. familiar with him. No, I was looking. I was reading through the article. I'm not familiar with him. You're I, not I familiar know with Johnny Rotten. Specials. Have you never listened? Well, yes, to... him. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever listened to the? That album? is Johnny Rotten. That is Johnny Rotten. Mm-hmm. Yes. I've heard a little I... bit. I was in skateboarding days, so mid eighties. Right. Yeah, and you would have heard Anarchy in the UK, which was. Yeah, that's the one I'm familiar with. Yeah, and uh, yep. possibly, let me think what other ones you would have heard of. Pretty God vacant, the Queen maybe. Is the record, right? And God Save yeah. the Queen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Class. I mean, they were a really tight band. People sort of say, "Oh, they didn't know how to play," and they got up, and they didn't, that, that's all lies. They had Glenn Matlock, who was brilliant, um, and um, well, Sid Vicious Jones didn't know and how Cook. to play. That was true. Sid, Sid. Sid Vicious did not know how to play, um, but they were a a very good. Uh, punk band and and they did kickstart an absolute generation of punks in this uh, side of the pond maybe not so hmm. much your side but now they're doing oh no definitely Europe. here they were really they were, they were big here. there I don't, I don't really know mm-hmm. well it's sort of by proxy right you know bands and people that would go over to the uk would see them and then they'd be like oh, i saw this crazy band and they would bring those influences over here so yeah they kickstarted okay. They were a big part of kickstarting punk in, in all ways, really. In Six all Pistols before or after Black Flag? Before. before. Were they? 
mm-hmm. before and concurrent at best. Slightly but... during. Yeah. Yeah. Black yeah Flag... I loved Black Flag quite a bit. Black Never... Flag was like late Sex 70s, Pistols. early 80s, and Sex Pistols was just a little before that. Yeah, so Sex Pistols, I think, was I love Black Flag. 76 to 77, 78, something like that. It was a very short period of the late 70s, maybe a bit later, I don't know. I'm rubbish with dates. But hmm. um, they made one album and, and then basically dissolved. And in, like, 1979, he, he set up PIL, I guess. Oh. Oh, nice. I don't know if you can tell, but I love Black Flag. <laughs> right there. Woo-hoo. That's why I have that. Uh, it's kind of out of focus for me, so I just saw a piece of camera machinery. Uh, I was like, "Nice try." <laughs> that was a nice, <laughs> nice microphone arm yeah, you got there. Oh, you liked it? Oh, well, <laughs> the viewers at back home will see that I zoomed over to my Dan Armstrong, which is, you know, that was a black. Oh right, there was a guitar, features. was there? I couldn't see because there was a giant mm-hmm. microphone. Well, it's clear, in its so way. that's that's. Pro- <laughs> I moved the microphone stand, Richard. But that drew our focus to it even more, because as you made the noise, you moved it. It was like, oh, hold on. What's going on here? Oh, I think the illness is eating away my brain. Do we have to go over this again? Oh, jeez. This this podcast has gone off the rails. Let's just start over again. Let's just start again. Should we redo it? (laughs) No. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) I mean, I'm sure the viewers are like, yes, please redo this. These guys are idiots. (laughs) Please stop everything that you're doing right now. And redo it immediately. Okay, so what's this extreme guitar for sale on Reverb? Oh, uh, well, uh, so that's we a um, no bed in court. <laughs> no, it's a, a Kramer. Um, oh, what is it? A Triaxis? You got to look at it, Bri. It's it's yes, your Triaxis guitar. guitar, ultra rare model from the eighties, for sale on Reverb for how much? I mean, whatever it is, it's eight thousand. Yeah, you can afford that. Eight thousand with, with pounds. All your pedal what's, butts. what's about nine thousand dollars? Nine thousand dollars. Yeah, give hmm. or take. And yet, it doesn't look like a Telecaster hard pass. Hmm. Hard pass. Blake is Next. considering it. Uh, I don't love it. I'd rather have the Enterprise. Like the hmm. Starship Enterprise. Yeah, there's. They did one. I saw. Oh, they actually talk about it here in the article. The two Tusk guitars stated having made its debut in the 86 edition of NAMM. Similarly, at the time of its reveal, the guitar starred alongside its sibling counterpart, another Star Trek-inspired model named the Kramer Enterprise. So, yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You hmm. need both of those in your collection. It looks, uh, kind of looks like an anchor. It does a little bit. And I don't, mm-hmm. like, not in a jokey way. It literally does. It literally look like looks like kind of like a boat anchor. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't um, seem like it'd be very comfortable to sit with that on your lap. Do you sit down while you play? Is that a thing people do? Apparently so. All the time? I, not in this house. I mean, it's well, I think it not. depends. Where, I, I think it depends what you're doing, though. You know, I mean, if you're just noodling around for a minute, do you do you really need to flip the guitar around your back? Well, of course, yes. But you can't do that <laughs> sitting down. It, the answer is yes. So you should always be standing up while you play. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing See, to do with the fact that I prefer it for some reason, and I happen to have a standing desk. That's not why I only play. I was going to say you're a stand. That's true. You're you're standing. T- <laughs> yeah. You're you're a stand. Yeah. Uh, we we get that. We understand, but you got to stand. You got I'm... well. I can't afford to, to lose any more vertical inches by sitting. That's the thing. I need to stand up to maximize <coughs> my height in any way I can because I I don't have any to spare. Ironically, I'm pretty sure that by sitting all the time, I've added quite a few horizontal inches, but that's another story. We won't go there. Um, I think it's really good to stand when you play because, for sure, if you're ever going to be in a band, unless you're Genesis, which if you are, please let me know, uh, you're really (laughs) going to be standing, right? But I think the good compromise is just to always play with a strap so that you can either stand or sit and it's basically the same because you're always using the strap's weight and that works for you. And it's Well, amazing. and as as you guys know, I um I generally use bead benders and you got to have a strap to use those. Mm-hmm. So when you sit down and use one, it's awkward. 
Oh yeah. yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you no, had to move yeah, your legs in a certain right. like out of the way, and it's just it's very awkward to sit down and play. You just got a really, you just got a man spread, and just pretty like the, pretty much. <laughs> that's that seems un like yeah, just stand up. I think that's the move. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. unless you can do the splits, then do the splits and sit down. You know, who knows? Well, that's fair. That's but fair. whatever. I cannot. Used to be able to. Not I'm not the days. guardian of who who uh, who should be sitting up and standing down. Or standing up and sitting down. Either one. I mean, on Patreon, we, we could develop this <laughs> sitting up, standing down routine into a slightly different conversation, I feel. But I don't. Oh, no. No, no. What? Hands I... on the spray bottle trigger. Yeah. I said <laughs> on Patreon. Spray? <laughs> what a, I've done nothing here. This is just. I could see where his mind was going. I could uh, see you, could, you could see just like the heat you were him, you know, coming off the this. top of his head. No, that's that is the illness. We would never. Wow. We would never set you up ever. Yeah, that's, right. That's um, just your mind. I haven't played a guitar properly for a week. Will I now have forgotten all of the songs that I know? No. No, you will forget them. Fine. You might be a little rusty if you're trying to nail your sweeping arpeggios or something. Uh, no. You'll be fine. Um, but it has to be said, there is actually something beneficial that can happen from not playing the guitar for a small amount of time. If you practice every you single it? day, you, you miss it. You hear new things, therefore, because you're you're no longer lazy to your sound. But also, your brain takes that time, and your subconscious works on stuff. And you will come back, and hmm. some things you will play better. Some things you will play worse. Hmm. But it's weird how the brain works because i found after coming back from breaks because I, I play every single day i force myself to play even if i've run out of time I'll, I'll just find a way of playing every single day and i find that if i do take that break it's actually more beneficial than than my other regime you may say why not just take breaks all the time um, that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> yeah you gotta have a balance there for sure yeah. I'm taking a four-year-long break from guitar. I hope to be a lot better when I'm done. Oh, yeah. No, I did, dude. I mean, I stopped playing between the ages of 17 and 25, I think. So eight-year no-play guitar. Because you went into the... That's right. You're busy building your trance beats. (laughs) I was. But now I've got the Boss SL2 Slicer, I'll be going back to the trance beats but with the guitar. This slicer pedal is so good. Now so, you're talking. So I am curious, though. When you did come back after, what's that, eight years or whatever, seven years? Yeah, I want to, I want then, to dig into that. Did you? Did it feel like starting over, or did you pick it up just like it? you hadn't touched it for a week or two? Uh, I still knew 50%. Because that's a big thing, I, right? Because you know what to do. Yeah, so I could still play a bit. I could, I, I could still play, you know, the first position, pentatonic shape, whatever. Uh, that I could play, so I could still improvise, so I could still enjoy playing the guitar. So I think that was the important thing, that I came back to something that I could do something with. Other than that, halfway through Stairway to Heaven, a couple of Doors songs and a couple of Cure songs, that's all I had in my rep. Oh, and maybe a really bad version of Hey Joe. Um, And, and you know, I'd practice those for ages before... I I really took it seriously a, a, again, but I kind of had Blake's attitude when I was maybe 27. So I gave up, like I say, when I was about 16, 17 and, and started again, 24, 25, but really took it seriously when I was 27, moved into the country, you know, got a drum kit again, got some recording gear, bought some amps, got some proper gear together. But I had Blake's attitude, which was, I don't need to learn anybody's stuff. I'm going to go, and if it sounds good, it is good. And you know what? That was a really creative time. I laid down some tunes Mm. that I listen back to now, and I can hear, you know, the really stupid mistakes in them. Some of them sound great. So I did retain quite a lot of the muscle memory, especially for like a bit of the widdly widdly or, you know, some bendage. Uh, I was was better than I thought when I got, got back, but I was also way, way worse than I thought because I did only know one pentatonic shape and six out of seven of the major chords etc etc but i knew how to make a bar chord and i you know i knew those sort of basics so i could find my way around could never play 
anything other than a major or a minor chord unless I'd actually learnt it. So, yeah, you know, it was an interesting time. Well, you don't need anything other than that anyways, you know? There are more chords than that? <laughs> I thought there was only three. D, A, and G. That's all there is, right? As far as I'm aware. It's basically but, all I you know, knew. Guitar playing is is a it's a mental game you have to like know what you're doing but so much of it is is physical and repetition you know that's how we get to that's how we memorize things that's why everybody knows first and second position pentatonic scale pretty much like cuz it's it's pretty easy to lock that into your brain once you've run through it enough and it's not too dissimilar from people who strength train and then go away from it once they get back to it they, generally speaking, will gain get back to where they were much, much faster than it originally took them to get there in the first place. It's, right. a, it's literally muscle memory. So if you've taken an eight-year break from powerlifting and then you get back into it, you'll get back to you know, where you stopped much faster than the years it took to build you up. And I think guitar playing is the same way to a degree. It's yeah. just a little more you know, thought process oriented than... Than... More of a creative endeavor than pushing yeah. a bunch of metal in the air. Right, right. Yeah, I, Which I, I, mean, I don't want to oversimplify that either. There's a lot to that as well, but well, it's yeah, just different. Course. Yeah, it's but, very but, different. But you are very correct because actually we all kind of forget how painful it is to make those early chord shapes, you know, to actually stretch your hands for the first time, to push down on those metal strings for a long period of time. And the pain you go mm -hmm. through doing that when you're young, you just you, know, you forget about it instantly. I can't imagine what it would be like, and I have absolute maximum respect for anyone picking up a guitar for the first time in like their 30s or 40s or 50s or you know even older, because it is going to be really tough. We we just like I obviously after eight years I didn't still have calluses on my finger, but I knew they would grow back within a few weeks of playing, and I knew what level of pain to push to, to kind of build them and all of that stuff. But that can really hurt you when you're first starting a guitar. And certainly some of the stretching and chord shapes can really mess with you. We we laugh about it. It's like, you know, how easy it is to play C, D and G. But making that chord change between C, D and G, if you've never played a guitar before, is actually a huge amount of work and understanding. So... Yeah, Begin, mm -hmm. beginning guitar really is. is a big work so you, you're definitely spot on Blake there's a lot of muscle memory goes into it and if you learn that young you're going to have a better time when you're older which is why even though my daughter really when she first started playing guitar showed absolute minimal interest in lessons or anything I just said just do what you can do what you will now she's come back a couple of years later and, and, and picked it up again and she's brilliant she'll drop it because she's a young person and she'll you know Suddenly she'll be into, I don't know what the young kids are into anymore. Pokemons, you know, something like that. That'll be next week. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I know nothing. But uh, I don't think Pokemon has anything. I don't, I don't think she'll be into Pokemon. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Maybe I got though. Some, I could be I wrong. Got some Pokemon cards right here. Well, so, there you, you go. Know. I stand corrected. Are you a grown yeah. man? Why the hell are you collecting yes. pictures of cartoon animals? Uh, I'm not. These are from when I was a child. And you have them right next to you for some reason. <laughs> yes, because I'm trying to figure out how much they're worth. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so there you go. That, that's the, that's the grown-up version of collecting Pokemons. <laughs> I could care less what they are. All I know is I can get in cash for them. I know I've got a uh, Shadowless Charizard in there that's worth a fair bit if you get it graded. So, hmm. A what now? But, Who? Uh, I was going to ask you a a shadowless Charizard. It's not the first oh, edition, course. but it's the next rarest one. Shatterless Charizard. Shadowless. Shadowless. Not a shatterless Charizard. No that would be a very <laughs> right. bad creature. <laughs> that's, like, that's like, wow, that's that's almost dangerous. His aura is brown. It's careful. the shatterless Charizard. Yeah, no. If there's shatting <laughs> that needs to be done, but you're shatterless. Sounds Oof. like a personal problem. Yes, you yeah. need some fiber in your life. Yeah, that's right. You know? we not need too much, fiber. though. Not too much too not fast. Not too much. <laughs> Easy on the Metamucil there, Grandpa. <laughs> um. <clears throat> on the what now? Metamucil. Metamucil, yes. It's what a is fiber Metamucil? supplement. Is it? Don't, it's a fiber don't supplement. Get that it's just there. ground fiber that you mix into water and then makes you go go bathroom. Mm -hmm. As they say here, bath, B-A-F-F, -F, bathroom. bathroom. <laughs> Going to bathroom. Going to bathroom. Well, I, 
I've had that. So I'd have to get down to the lab, library. Yeah, sorry, go for your question. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, like. go, I got a question. So I think I've talked about this on the podcast before. I've posted about it before on the old Instagrams, but I've play, played every day for a very long time, and I've had jobs that were working with my hands, and I've also been into the aforementioned weightlifting stuff. Now, I can get calluses, like, on the palms here yeah. from, from lifting. I never get calluses on my fingertips, ever. And I, hmm. I've been playing every day for years and years and years. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah see, I can, touch, I can touch very hot, like, p- pick up something hot. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really, I can feel the heat around it, but I can't really feel it that much. My fingers don't hurt. Like, it doesn't hurt me to play guitar, but my skin's it does not callous there for some reason. Hmm. It's very weird. I don't know why that I is. I think you read a lot of moisturizer. No. Have you tried playing, you know, more than uh, one note per minute, maybe? <laughs> I, I use using one finger for your just like for your bars oh my or God. whatever. Yeah, my Maybe index like, finger is very callous <laughs> from all those open well, string licks. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I think you you kind of get used to it a bit though, don't you? I don't really have calluses now. I my skin is harder there, but it is not like a hard, hard pad tell. like it used to be. But it can take I can take hmm. a huge amount of of pressure on it without it. It's splitting or anything like that. This is a lovely episode. You know Let's what? About splitting when, I, flesh. when I really think about it, the skin on the the left hand is, like you said, it's thicker. I can tell it's a little bit thicker, yeah, but it's yeah. not so, a callus like I usually think of it. Yeah, no, so I'm looking at my, different to, my hands. I never so, have done this before, and it's definitely different on my left hand. M- my this is great video cat- Oh, yeah. it's fantastic! Grown men look at hands. <laughs> <laughs> my, but my, you've got the same, Brian, but yours are bigger. My weightlifting calluses, which are really down at the moment because I've not done it for a while. They're really hard. They're like that. You could pick those yeah. if you really wanted to, but my fingertips—they're mm-hmm. just like strong. They just push. And through. I've seen some guitarists get really thick calluses on their fingertips. Like vid- I used to when I was younger. Them. I remember like you could feel a thick, like you could move it around. It was weird. I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just gonna say that was an alien assist. actually invading your body. That's assist, is what yeah. they call that. <laughs> Um, You're supposed to lance those. Right. Me and Bry had the greatest idea for a guitar accessory the other day. Because Bry was looking for some custom thumb picks, weren't you, Bry? I was. Mm-hmm. So and we actually, invented... actually, before we, before we continue, so oh, I've got to reach up and grab it. So if you're on video, this would be amazing. If you're just listening to this in your car or whatever, this is going to be really boring. But my two thumb picks I use, a Herco that looks like a regular guitar pick. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like shaped like a regular one. And I filed it down to be the size of a jazz pick. And I'm like, this is what I need. I need like a thumb pick that's like a jazz pick, just something small. Sure. And they don't make them. No one makes those. If only we knew so, anybody to that me, I'm made thinking picks. Wampler picks. I, yeah, I wish we knew someone named Rick. Well, I, well and you know, picks. it's funny because actually um, I my first thought was Rick. But I think most of his stuff is like stone, things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, not stone, but different. he uses it, a lot of it's different very, materials. It's very hard I plastic, know. I've right? never seen him make a thumb pick. They, yeah, it, they're plastic. really... I, I, yeah, I mean... This is such a gorgeous So, thumb. Rick, if you're listening to this, I mean, I know you'll be on the Patreon, but Rick, um, get a hold of me if you have any thoughts on this thumb pick thing, because I'm really super interested. Well, no, don't him. get a hold of him, because you'll get in the way mm-hmm. of our next invention, which is the chicken picking glove. It's essentially a snug fitting <laughs> glove that you put on your hand where we're going to expose the palm so you can palm mute, but on four fingers, you're just going to have different shaped picks. Uh, maybe even chicken themed. Just why not? Uh, that would be what you need, Bry. Only if you can have feathers. Like it's a long glove that goes up towards your elbow with feathers on it. Yeah, like an opera glove goes all the way up. <laughs> yeah, Why exactly. not? I'm I'm down with that. Has I anyone ever see, tried Brian. that though? Hold a guitar on, hold accessory. On. A picking glove. Right, we can't I mean, start the show yet. I gotta find my chicken right, I'm, glove. I'm thinking about whenever you're going between the free bird, you know, when you're playing at the VFW this week. The weekend. what? When you're go- okay, I'm not going there. You're going between. Oh no, no! Oh my goodness! I need a, I need a laser gun. Anyways, um, so when you're going between your your Leonard Skinner song and then you're like, all right, this next one is a country shuffle, you know? Mm-hmm. Then 
you're going to have to be like, all right, I need front person. I need you to keep the audience busy because I've got some clothing I need to put on. No, That's no, your no, chicken no, glove. No, no, no. Chicken oh, glove. You, you come back in a full chicken suit. <laughs> a full chicken, chicken glove. <laughs> I'm ready to pick some chickens. <laughs> so what so we need to you do. You want a little, a little story? Go on. Uh, about chicken suits? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely 100%. Okay, so uh, as a youth, uh, going to the mountain and going snowboarding was something that I would do quite frequently because here the mountain's like an hour away and you could get together with your friends and get a season pass relatively cheap because they had a group buy thing you could do. So we would go like every weekend and go skiing and snowboarding. And one, one day I thought it would be funny to wear a chicken suit and go snowboarding I mean, down the mountain. And so I I put on a full a full chicken suit, <laughs> and it was the worst run I've ever had because the I had the mask on and the goggles kept fogging up because the mask would breathe into into the goggles and I couldn't see anything, <laughs> and so I, it was night so I thought I'll take the goggles off but then it was snowing sideways and so the <laughs> snow was in my eyes so either way I just like couldn't see where I was going and just going down the hill of this in this crazy chicken suit. Uh, but on the the funniest part was on the way up, I didn't ride the chairlift with any of my friends. They were like waiting for me at the top of the mountain while I changed into the suit. So I rode the chairlift with this random guy, and I just had this chicken mask on and this chicken suit strapped with my snowboard on as we rode up the mountain. And like halfway up, he's like, so what are you doing? I'm like, what? I'm like, what do you mean? What? <laughs> he's like, are you, are you advertising something or what are you what are you doing? I was like. I'm just going snowboarding, man. Like, uh, uh, I don't know what your, what your deal is. I didn't have any warm clothes. It's the only thing clean. So, yeah. that's what I'm... <laughs> so it's my chicken suit. Yeah. And that is my story of uh, snowboarding in a chicken suit. There you go. This is great. Oh, as I it reminds me of when be. JHS did a... Remember when JHS had a... I forget what video it was, but they dressed in penguin costumes and went to the grocery store. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I didn't see that one. I've got to find that. Oh, oh so funny. That's great. Speaking of JHS, oh, segue, we got you got that. About. Yeah, we have. Um, we haven't had a chance to use Brian's breaking news sting yet, though. So you know, I, <laughs> I, I feel we need to just talk about this little bit of uh, news on on the Iron Maiden front very, very quickly. Uh, Wait, that's that's the wrong one. <laughs> that's, a... <laughs> that's the wrong one. Oh, there we go. Is this it? Bre- that's breaking it. news. There. That's Where's the it? title sequence yeah. it had before? Like it's stuck. Okay. It's yeah, it's stuck. What's what's wrong with this? <laughs> of course, it's stuck. We just see Brian's it's, cheek. It's stuck <laughs> in front oh of my, a Shaw I, amp. I think my entire camera is stuck. Oh no, Richard! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this it's, is terrible for the audio podcast, but it's uh, great on video. If you guys are oh, watching this on YouTube, you're what having a as mistake much fun as Richard to today. make. Oh, there we uh, go. No, there we go. We're back. Now, nice, I nice can't view see up my, your nostril I, there, Brian. My phone isn't nice working. Clean. There we go. What's what's nice and clean? Your nostril. My hair your nostrils. My forehead. Uh, mm-hmm. Is it just me, or, or is my forehead <laughs> getting bigger every year? Hmm. Um, no. Uh, did you before we talk about the um, thing we actually do have to talk about? Did you guys even check out the acoustic version uh, of Power Slave that I linked to you? What? What are you talking about? Is that in the? Where's Wait, that? we didn't even go through the thing. You, we t- we're going to talk we were talking about, about the JHS. JHS thing. What are you talking about? Well, that was my I'm news so confused bit, Richard. Oh, all right, let's just talk about the JHS thing. Well, we thing. didn't get to no, talk no, about it. No power slave for you. Okay. That's Sorry, fine. I thought we were segueing into the JHS thing. Are we not? Yes, yeah, sure. This why is not? Fantastic. This is <laughs> like not podcasting for six years and then coming back and trying it again. Um, <laughs> so Richard, you probably are better explained at this. You you get a lot of the social media questions that I that are filtered well, before actually, they get I, to me. So part of my job is is clearly to look at all social media in the guitar space and not just our own uh, particular brand, but that p- definitely focuses on some of the brands that I work with, particularly in the, the boutique audio. Uh, uh, booty camps um world so one of them that i check regularly is the, the friedman um forum and over on there the guys were were chatting about uh getting a new amp in and what attenuator to use 
Now, you know, Friedman is a premium amp. That is a tube amp that you're going to want to hear the best of. So the guys were like, oh, oh yeah. you should go and buy the JHS uh, attenuator. I'm like, wait a minute, JHS have an attenuator? And then, of course, they're talking about the, I guess it's about $40 or something like that. The, well, it's the just sort a volume of, box. It's just a uh, the volume, just a volume box. pot that's attached with two jacks, yeah. Right. But that not that just the same as, like, the volume pot on a pedal stuck in, in between your guitar and amp you know as long as Gen- it's generally i mean there's getting in the weeds a little bit so there's a few different ways to make a volume pot but the most common way yes it's the same way it, 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 with guitar amps tube amps specifically then that volume pot literally is exactly like a master volume so if you put that in the loop after an amp with a master volume all you're doing is running a master volume into another master volume that's all you're doing so it's not going to have so I guess the it, effect you want. No, because an attenuator takes all that sound through all those different stages, including the transformer, which has its own sound as well, adds to the sound, rather. And then it takes that signal and then kills some of it. And if the way when you put a volume, like a volume box or you know this type of circuit in the effects loop, acting as a master volume, you're limiting that signal before it goes into like the phase inverter, the power stage, before it hits the transformer. So it's not doing the same thing at all, other than bringing the volume down. But two totally different sounds, completely. So it's the really just the same I can as... think of for the... Sorry, oh. Blake, you go. Go ahead, Richard, sorry. No, I, I, we, we got a little bit of lag going on here, I think, because Brian, when you were talking... You look like one of those old kung fu movies that have been badly dubbed. And Blake, I <laughs> couldn't see any clue that you were about to speak, and so I just blurted it out. And clearly, that's that's got to be your. Uh, it's got to be on your end because my end looks fantastic. I Anyways, don't know. It's on I, I read that on a toilet. So we were bowl talking about. Sure. <laughs> it, um, so, uh, so the the JHS one. Well, here's where I can see uh, a good use case for it is right. if you really like the sound of your preamp distortion and you don't want to slam the power section of your your amp. Mm-hmm. I could for see sure. that that's the perfect spot to Absolutely. use that. And I think yep. that's what its intention is. So if you have 100%. a yeah, an amp that you love the preamp saturation, but you want you want to keep that power amp kind of nice and neutral. That's a perfect place to use it. Mm-hmm. But if you're using something like a Friedman, which typically I don't know what Friedman they were referring to in this case, but most of them are kind of Marshall esque in their yeah hot roots. Marshalls. I think they were actually and, looking at the twin sister or, or something like that. I can't remember, uh, but it's a you know, yeah. So in that case, you're going to want to hear the power amp saturating and distorting. I would think that's part of the sound. Yeah. yeah. So that's not going to get you what you're looking for, unfortunately. No. It's not yeah. an attenuator. It's something else. Right. And I, I want to mention, too, that we're saying JHS Black Box, but there's a ton of these things available. Look up, like, Volume Box or something on Reverb, and you'll see a bunch of them because they're so easy to make. There's nothing to them. Literally just a pot, three wires, and two jacks. So there's nothing to them. Um well, I, I take that back. As far as I, the, the, I mean, there is obviously, form. Yeah. I'm sure somebody somewhere has done some active circuit. Yes, uh, and some will have some, fun. you know, special signal cutting stuff and all sorts. But um, that's technical, by the way, Brian. You can ask me about it later. Um, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you. Uh, yeah, what, what part do they use for, for that part, for that stuff? That's, that's signal an OC42. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Um, OC42 for the stuff. Yeah, gotcha. That's, that's mm-hmm. right. Just uh, buy some of those real quick completely lost <laughs> my train of thought no the important thing about this though is like when i um so, so the first attenuator i used was actually built into an amp it was the uh the tone king one that's built into the imperial uh, and that made me yeah. think ha huh, i like this 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 is good the tone king one and this is not a plug for tone king um but they make great amps and are now available to buy direct online from their website toneking.com uh th- there's tell them richard a... you. use code richard 30 <laughs> <laughs> They they have um they have a split attenuator so you can change the attenuation on the clean channel 
than than you have on the the dirty channel which is brilliant because yeah you want more attenuation on that dirty channel so you can ramp it right up but you might want that really bright fender like clean that you get by just having the volume down a bit lower and all of that so that was a really cool feature Mm. when i got the soldano uh, you know the slo 30 that's a very loud 30 watt amp and Oh, yeah. I could not hear anything like the best of it until I stuck it into the, the two notes captor that I use as an attenuator, which let me crank it up and get that really sweet, saturated sound. So people who have kind of gone down the volume box route thinking this will help them hear the, the best of their amp, you haven't heard it. Go and get a good attenuator. No, Spend no, the money. Yeah. And wow, it's, yeah. Yeah, and I think Tone King makes uh, what's their uh, the, it's the Iron the, Man uh, Mini box is called the Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, the Iron Man and the Iron Man Mini. Yeah, they're great uh, boxes. But there's a load of others. I think Sir makes yep. uh, an attenuator. Sir makes one. Um, yeah. so I, I I probably need to point other. out too before someone try, like blows up an amp. If you take that volume box and you stick it between your amp and the speaker, oh, no, you no. will do damage to your amp, and yes. you could potentially. St- literally probably start a fire <laughs> that's uh, i mean that is a very good point because so, all, all attenuators you have to be careful with right you have to match the yeah. resistance you have to make sure that you're not running the load uh, in an incomplete chain so you have to make sure that everything's plugged in before it's all switched on otherwise bad things will happen right right mm-hmm. so, and to really kind of hammer that point home this is the two notes capture it has a fan on it and that right. fan, every time, it's not like a solid fan. It actually reacts with your playing mm-hmm. and how much watch you're using or how, how much power you're pushing through it and everything. Um, so the more signal it's getting, the more the fan is spinning. And if you don't have that, you will melt stuff. Mm-hmm. So that to say, yeah, don't put that volume, any sort of volume box like that in front of your speaker because good things will not happen. <laughs> No, definitely. Yeah, because, really... You'll lose money out of your account for you'll lose. Money. You'll lose some money. Your tech will be happy. Right. <laughs> yeah. RTF. Yeah. Whoever works on your say. amps will love you. The, Good. The thing right. that, yeah, people Gear need to realize this. Even though it's a quarter inch cable, right? It's still a quarter inch cable that looks kind of like an instrument cable. But it's what's different. coming out of your amplifier is not the same as what's coming out of your guitar pedals. No. Not even close. No. Worlds not even different. close. World's different. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And don't use a guitar cable hooking your speaker up either no don't do that either yeah and don't do what i've done twice which is think to myself hmm i kind of don't like the cables that i've got plugged into my monitor speakers which are quarter inch speaker cables let me go and buy some more quarter inch speaker cables and forget that it needs balanced ones otherwise you get a massive hum i've done that (laughs) twice oh yeah and i've like got a box full of the rejected cables every time I'm like where's the, what's the oh I've mm-hmm. done it again mm-hmm. <laughs> yep those gotta be TRS they got you yep All right, that concludes that, that the concludes... safety section of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> an important section exactly where I was going mm-hmm. I mean we have a number of things that we need to talk about I don't know which are for here which are for uh, Patreon I I think we should really talk about your new amp, Blake. But I think before we do, I'm going to very quickly say, I went to Costco last week. I bought a lot of interesting products and I ate a pizza there. Bullshine? Uh, They didn't have any bullshine. Although, what's that drink? Is it Hmm. pure? That energy drink that everyone's buying for like ridiculous amounts of can. I mean, that just sounds like bullshine to me. Um, But no, I went to Costco. I had one of their food court pizzas. And it's the closest you can mm-hmm. get to an American New York cheese and tomato pizza over here in two respects, but not in a third, which is why I think you disagreed with my statement that it was as close as you can get to a New York street pizza, Blake. And those two factors, okay. the tomato sauce is different and the mozzarella yes. is completely different. The mozzarella is, is brilliant. It's exactly like New York pizza mozzarella which if you've tried english pizza mozzarella there's a difference i don't know what it is maybe it's a bit more fancy maybe it has tea in it i don't know but it tasted like a new york pizza (laughs) where i will concede it didn't quite meet the test the crust and the base was not 
quite as good. But I didn't care. I was in a cheese coma, and that's all that mattered. Oh, and the slices were huge. For so one ninety nine. The 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 now I am a fan of the Costco pizza, especially for the price. And I I think it's probably the best. Like move over Little Caesars, it's the best pizza per dollar that you can get. Is the Costco Costco pizza for sure. And I I had to read your text and remember that you're you're talking about it through the context of being in the UK because you're like it's the closest you can get to New York pizza. And I was like, absolutely, it is not the closest you can get to New York pizza. But then we I remember you're us. in the UK. Yeah, I'm like, it is. It's not it, even. No, it's not. It's not. It, but in the UK, I realized it is. maybe it is for you. For yeah. you, it is. Okay, no, for honestly, me, it's no, not. So even we though get... I don't live in, in New York. No, right. And look, I've been to some absolutely great pizza places out in the states, uh, and you know, I'm I've never eaten pizza over here that's tasted the same. There's just it's difficult to describe whether it's just something about the mellowness of the cheese, maybe, or the creaminess of it. It's a different level. Maybe the saltiness. Maybe it's just got loads of high fructose corn syrup in it. But whatever it is, there's a real <laughs> difference in taste to American cheese and tomato pizza. Oh, I was going to say, has Brian had a stroke? No, he's there. Um, no, I had to take care of something. I had to do a little actual oh. work for a second. Oh, oh okay. right. During the podcast. I know. Wow. You tell them boys and settle down. We're podcasting. <laughs> um, but no, Blake, the, the, this is why I'm happy. It tastes, it, it isn't the same, but it's as close as I'm going to get. And that made me very happy. Uh, that's, that's understandable. It is as close as you can get. Yes. So that doesn't and, mean it's and, the best pizza in the world. Uh, the yeah. best pizza in the world is, as I said, from the crappiest street pizza place that I went to when I drove from France to Italy and literally just to have a pizza and like it was to die for again. They just simple pizzas are the best, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, but I do enjoy a bit of Costco shopping now. That's a, that's a new benefit I've got. I bought a liter of maple syrup. That's a year's supply. Like over here, that would cost you the equivalent of about 400 pounds, nine bucks. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> hold on, Bry. And that. Hold on, right, hold on. So, did we meet our Costco sponsorship requirement yet? Is that uh... <laughs> <laughs> Richard got something? Yes. <laughs> I had to share. He, it with he drinks you. all that maple syrup. He's going to catch the beatus. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, hey, so real quick before we sign off here, um, something I wanted to bring up on the main podcast because um, I've seen this question several times now. And it's basically asking, is X pedal buffered? And there's a couple ways to go about it. Is it buffered bypass, meaning when it's off, is there a buffer? Or is it buffering the signal when it's on? Two totally different questions. So if you're asking that question, you've got to kind of dig a little deeper and explain. But the answer to most situations, if you're ever wondering that question, if it's if it's a, if it's an overdrive or distortion circuit or anything using a battery, almost over, over, almost, almost I should say, except for transistors, <laughs> except for most NPN or PNP transistors, then it's probably going to probably going oh, to be how a many low caveats do output, you need to put here? which means that it's probably going to be buffered. But there's exceptions because I've seen a lot of pedals that have a bunch of junk at the end and i'm like and you just destroyed the impedance why didn't you put a buffer at the end of that circuit you tool um so yeah but i would say most often people use good engineering practices and have a low impedance output i just gotta get that out there so i can point to something when people ask got me. it off your chest now you yes. massive circuit nerd yeah, I do. I, feel I can see it on guitar.com tomorrow brian wampler says all pedals are buffered shut up <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's gonna you be. need to be more controversial in 2023 i feel bry i feel we need to unleash controversial bry on the world I I, maybe i should uh I, I mean josh did really well sounds like the josh episode today josh did really well with the kipper thing maybe i should be like you know what i've been faking all this time i'm actually using like an old rp1 from 1998 <laughs> I think you should Everything play. I play. I put a dead body in the thumbnail of my video and decided it was a bad idea and replaced it. So was uh, that an actual an actual dead body? Uh huh. 
<laughs> so, so, right. so nonchalantly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, let me let me clap. A human dead body? Uh-huh. Did it die of natural causes? Nope. Uh <sighs> should you be saying this on an, a, a podcast? Are, are you going to get a knock on the door from <laughs> I the, didn't do it. V- b- they did oh. it to themselves. What? This is getting darker by the minute. That for a thumb. This is, man. What were you you can't I'm put scared. that stuff out on the internet. I did. Have you I been been changed it to Swedish I thought death metal later. again. Yeah. <laughs> You could go yes. burn a church. I thought oh. Richard would actually be familiar with this. Would you? Were you familiar with this? This what? story, the Heaven's Gate fiasco. Yes, I was very. I put it in the text thread. I, you know, I didn't get to really is. check. I, I, you used the picture from Heaven's Gate as a thumbnail. Wow, I did. Wow, I, what <laughs> are they putting in the water? In, in in that's that's dark, dude. That's really dark. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty dark. As I'm worried about you now. You've got unhinged <laughs> all of a sudden. Oh, I mean, I, I mean, changed like the it. I changed chugga it out chugga. just for a picture of the shoes. <laughs> that's no better. That's, just the that's shoes. actually worse. It is because no, the because sh- it was the shoes, the shoes were attached thing. to the body before. I mean, yeah, yes, but the shoes, the shoes were a thing. That Next. brand of they were Nike trainers, weren't they? There was like a, a yeah particular... Nike. Uh, yeah, I forget the brand, which model, but yes. I mean, this is a lot like. Using a metal zone for a clean boost. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that too? That's fine. I, I appreciate the fact that you've boost? lightened I... the uh, tone by saying <sighs> that, Bry. No words. None of it makes any sense to me anymore. I, I have honestly, no words. Am I still so ill that this is just a hallucination in my bed? <laughs> it feels like I, said, I thought better of it. I, I thought better of it, and I changed it out. <laughs> this is kind of like. Idea. That seed in a film where it cuts, and then it cuts back, and the main character is wearing a chicken suit, and and that... oh, no, what happened? Blake. Where where did you come up with this idea? Well, the pedal's called the Heaven's Gate. It's all branded. Okay, all right that makes that. sense. No, that's fine. All right. Yeah. No, I'm happy with that. All right. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, then you got to go that route. Then you yeah, have no choice. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that's a brave. Right. Speaking I don't of, really uh, prove of the choices, names, to be fair, I mean, I don't really. Uh, I'm not the judge, but like, it does just sound like, yeah. I mean, that was a tragedy. That was um, Marsh, Marshall, what's his face, wasn't it? Oh, I forget his name. Applewhite. That's it's it. A, Marshall Applewhite. It's a crazy story. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were waiting to ride great. on a comet's tail. It was was it Halle Halle Bop, wasn't it? Comet Halle Hale, Bop. Hale Bop. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hail Bop, I believe, is how it said it. Yeah. Yeah, we're it's pretty crazy. <laughs> hey, speaking uh, of choices, <laughs> um, I thought I thought I thought I would take it take a minute since we're down to the last you know few minutes of this episode, and uh, you know use my choice to thank our executive producers. You know. Sure, I like that. You like that? Mm-hmm. You want me to? Yeah. So I keep going. Go. I can keep going if you want me to. Yeah, go for it. All right, here it comes. You ready? All right, here it comes. Wait, wait for it. All right, so big thanks to Bill Bays, Jake Young from Man the Helm Podcast. You had, you were on his podcast last week, weren't you, Blake? I was. Yeah, I was. there you go. I had a good time. Good, good podcast. Justin Burke, David Tindall, Night Hoss, Dave Trumbetti, Shannon Weaver in the band... Reduced to rust. Eric Wilson. Vader Frostad. Oh, Michael Freer. Sean Arbo of Gun Street Wiring. <laughs> Rick Calhoun of Honey Picks. Forever. Who, who's going to make me my own custom thumb pick? You know? Love. Uh, DJ Petty F. Uh, hopefully, anyways. Dylan Toxtone. Strain. Kevin Harrington. Barry from Grez Guitars. Felicity, who's been making a lot of annoying memes lately. Tom Kelly, Pigsy, Zebo, John O'Neill, Robert Carr, Hunter Hudson, Rob Stokes, Jordan from Poison Noises, The Flying Dutchman, Nick Spano, Six Feet Removed, and The Twankings. Bye. Bye. Later.